Hi, welcome to the, no, not the expected knitter. Welcome to Knitting Samurai Plus One Podcast, Episode 6, Bald. I'm your host, Steph, and uh, you can find me on Ravelry as Knitting Samurai, and you can find a blog for this podcast at plus one the number one dot blogspot dot com and we're on iTunes and Blip and all over the place so this handsome co-host of mine happens to be Mr. Roland he is has graciously agreed to co-host today as long as Tigger is present so Tigger is with us and so is Roland <laughs> and he's showing off his bald cuteness Yes, he lost all his hair. It's starting to grow. Well, he didn't lose all his hair. Let me start again. He lost the uh, male pattern baldness, like this front part here of his hair, and then kept the bit on the back of his crown, and that was about this long and standing straight up. And then he had the nice ring around the back of hair that he also kept, and so he just looked like a very funny little man. So we cut off. Shh tell people. I know it's sacrilege, but we cut off those crazy orangutan hairs off the top. And now I'd say he's got about a quarter inch of growth coming in on the top. So, and it's nice and it's the same shade of brown that it was, which is about my shade. So, yes, and I'm talking. My talking is very interesting, obviously. So, that's the Roland news. Yeah, he's two months old and um, we had a two-month checkup last week and he is a whopping 98th percentile for height and his head is off the charts because he's he's a big guy and wait he's coming in over 13 pounds so he's happily growing along and I am knitting him hats and other things but um let's start well start the knitting talk with uh, a little bit of a like let me hide my face in shame <laughs> Because I am a knitter, you wouldn't know it to look at what I've done these past couple weeks. Um, I haven't really been that motivated to knit. So, I've done a lot of weaving in ends and sewing on buttons. And I had uh, six Roland sweaters that needed buttons, so I sewed those all on. And I've been taking pictures of him wearing them. What? You're okay. It's okay. Here, look. Look, there's Tigger. Check out Tigger. Oh, yes. Tigger's always a favorite. Um, yeah, weaving in ends and sewing on buttons. I had eight pairs of socks that I found squirreled away that I had finished but didn't weave in the ends. So, did that and, um, yeah, pictures and playing with the baby. So, the little bit of knitting I have done has been for him. I first knit him this hat, which is, um, a, using Cascade 220 paints. It is color 9861. It's a basic 2x2 uh, two two rib. I cast on 72 stitches, did 2x2 two two rib. <laughs> it was long enough. <laughs> I did a 4 stitch cable and then kept uh, purl 2, knit 2, purl 2 cable. Very simple, straightforward little hat for him, which he's been wearing. Um, I really like the color. I don't know how well you can see it. It has teals. Surprise purples, blues. It's great. So he's been wearing that one a lot. I actually finished it the day that it snowed here. So I think October 29th, 30th, one of those days, right around Halloween, it snowed. And so all the kids um, in our neighborhood, or all the kids in all of our town, go trick-or-treating on the 30th instead of the 31st and then they can go to the neighboring communities on the 31st. It's very weird. It freaked us out the first year we were here. Like, why are there people at the door on the 30th, not the 31st? But uh, it was snowing and so it got canceled. So, um, or moved back a day. But, um, yeah, so this is Roland's first snow hat. So I finished it the day it was snowing. So there's that one. And then I have some unknown yarn that I bought at the local farmer's market. It is a, I think I might have showed it before, it's a baby blue and pale green barber pole um, worsted weight yarn. So I finished that one, which was knit on US 7s, kept the 7s out, decided to go with 82 stitches <laughs> this time, and did a 
um, started off with a 2x2 two two rib and then kept the cable motif, but did them wherever I felt like it. So they're twisted in all kinds of crazy ways, and this is really more of a beanie hat um, for him. And yeah, I did, I um, carried up the purling up to the top, which is unusual. Usually you see hats with knit at the top, so I made the cables come to a point and then went around with the purl stitch. So I kind of like the way it looks. Um, he's not wearing it right now because although it snowed on all right, right around Halloween, it's 68 degrees outside today. It is a very warm November day. November 8th. November 8th. Two months old in five days. So I've been working on that and really that's like the majority of my knitting time, which has been very, very tiny, has been spent on those two things. But I will show you uh, my Sunday's coming sweater or Mardi Gras sweater. I talked about it last week or last week. <laughs> as if I'm recording weekly. Um, last time I talked to you. I don't know where I was. So I've split off after the sleeves. Oh, that's the back. Here's the front. So you can see the uh, Henley collar, right? V-neck collar. It's got some buttons so he can close it. Split off for the sleeves. Started down the body. I think I have another... Um, inch to go before I start the seed stitch edging. So I'm doing seed stitch instead of ribbing on the edges and uh, move on to the sleeves. And this is how much yarn I have left. <clears throat> Not very much. So I'll definitely finish the body and then the sleeves. Not enough to finish the sleeves. So I contacted Fiber Nymph Lisa, Fiber Nymph Dye Works, and said, can you do another one? So she's doing another skein of the Sunday's Coming colorway and she's going to try and get it as close as she can and whatever, different dye lots, all that. It could be, I don't doubt her dyeing abilities. I know the reality of hand dyed yarn is not perfect. So um, it could be spot on and it could be completely different. So she's doing a skein of that for me and then she's also doing a skein of the grain. So if I need to, if I don't like how well it matches, I'll just do the sleeve solid green and that'll be great. So yeah, I think it's kind of neat the way the stripe width varied depending on the number of stitches because there are increases. This is the, sorry, Elizabeth Zimmerman's easy, no, seamless yoke sweater. You doing okay? You doing okay little guy? Yeah, ready for a nap. He, uh, he sleeps eight or nine hours straight at night, which is wonderful. We know we're very lucky to have that. And gets up, eats around six o'clock, and then goes back to sleep for two to three more hours. He didn't do that this morning. He stayed up. So we're definitely behind on our sleep count for today. Um, but anyway, so this is the Elizabeth Zimmerman sleeveless, no, seamless yoke sweater. So there are increases here, here. I don't know. There, maybe here. There are three, three points of increases on this sweater, and so it really changes the width of the stripes. So, <laughs> Are you just watching him? Hey, hey, pay attention to me and my knitting. <laughs> That's what we're here for, right? Not just looking at the cute baby sitting next to me. Um, so, worked on that a little bit. It's kind of on hold. She said it's going to take about three weeks, and... I would say that was a week ago, so two more weeks and then I'll have yarn to finish this guy up. And then lastly, I needed some semi-mindless knitting uh, and I went to the UFO bin. Actually, I should say that it's not a bin, it's a closet. And so far since I've been home, I've been like the last few weeks a cleaning Nazi. So if there's a closet in my house, I've gotten to it, reorganized it, emptied it out, sent it to Goodwill, cleaned it up, set it perfectly on the shelves. It looks gorgeous, right? Oh, oh bless you. Oh. Bless you. Um, my mom actually came and helped me reorganize the garage last weekend, so it is beautiful. It's like everything is in its bin and stacked and oh, it's so organized. I just want to hang out in the garage. Yeah. Anyways, um, <laughs> so the yarn closet was another one. 
um, the yarn closet was one of the closets that got attacked. And so I was revisiting all of my UFOs. I didn't rip anything out, but I, you know, clumped them together and saw what there was. And I re reviewed, returned to, I don't know, whatever. I saw these socks that I had started last October, so October 2010, and they are the Hermione's Everyday Socks by Erica Luder, Louder. I am, I, I found them, and I thought, oh, those are dead simple socks to work on. Why don't I pull those out and give that a go while we're watching football, because, yeah, I'm watching football now. Uh, <laughs> and... Steve's teaching me football. I never understood the game. I thought it was just a bunch of men out there running around trying to get from one end to the other, and I didn't understand downs or how any of that worked, and now I do, and it's much more interesting to watch, and one of my best friends loves football, and doesn't have kids, doesn't want kids, and so she comes over, she and her husband come over a lot and watch the games with us, and she's just like, silver lining, you know what you're talking about now, like, you're not just sitting there prattling on about whatever, you're watching the game, paying attention, like, it's great that you had a kid. <laughs> Anyways, so I wanted something mindless to work on while the games were on. And I knew I could do this since it was so simple, and it is so simple. You should check it out if you haven't. It uh, adds a little variety to the straight stockinette stitch. I don't know if you just heard Linus. He's on the other side of the door crying to come in. Are you spitting? Okay, we'll, we'll buzz through here because I think he's getting a little antsy. Um, yeah, so you should check them out because it's a good substitute to a straight stockinette or two by two rib, you know, if you're tired of doing the same old, same old. So, not sure if the sock is designed to be toe up or not. I'd take the stitch pattern and do my normal toe up construction. So, that's what this is. It is um, Aussie sock, Oasis Aussie, Aussie sock. I had purchased three skeins at Rhinebeck, I think my first year I went. I, this is the third and final skein, and then it will be out of my stash. There's nothing wrong with it. I'm just not in love with it. Like, I wouldn't buy it again. Typically, I don't like yarns that are a variegated two-color yarn because you end up with pooling or spirals or some sort of weird... It's not weird. Some people love it. It's not my taste. So, um, and a lot of their... Two, I know they have a lot of two colors, and then the three color one that I knit with, I knit a pair of, I think Van Dyke's? It was a Wendy Johnson sock, anyways, for my friend Brianne with those. Yeah, you talking? You have things to say? Must have put his mouth on it. Um, yeah, those had horrible pooling, and I was actually ended up splitting the ball and alternating it to keep the pooling from happening because they did really small sections of color evenly spaced around the, of course, the skein of yarn. And that's what happens when you knit with yarn that's dyed in a circle, knit in a circle. So, um, here are the Hermione's Everyday Socks knit on size 1.5, 2.5 millimeter. Oh no! No, no, no. Check out Tigger. One more minute. Um, yeah, so I'm coming down the foot. I'm about to start the gusset increases, and then I will be done. Well, then I'll be ready for the heel. I won't be done. But I have decided to make them short socks because I like short socks. And I looked in my sock drawer the other day, and I have very few pairs of short socks. All of my short socks have like seven, five to seven inch cuffs, and I like this for some reason. I have two pairs of those, and those are the ones I keep going to. Maybe it's a fall thing. Like, early fall when you start wearing socks, you want shorter cuffs. Less warmth. I don't know. Anyway, so, working on those. And last section, because I already talked about rolling, let's move on to what's new. Um, this week, this time, whatever, I recently ordered some Dream in Color Smooshy with Cashmere Sock Yarn. Have you heard of this? I hadn't. I was flipping through the web's catalog reading it to Roland. He actually is very interested in, you know, nitpicks, webs, interweave. I just <laughs> read it. Whatever I'm reading, I read it to him. 
so he's good with that. So I ordered three skeins of it. I actually only have two here. One of them's caked up and waiting to be a Wendy, Wendy Johnson shawl as soon as I get my act together. But it is a... And they changed the labels. I was surprised. So it looks different. It just says dream. It doesn't say dream with color on it. Um, this color is, it's a sparkler, color 510, and this is 70% superwash, 20% cashmere, 10% nylon. I'm not sure I'll make socks. Maybe I'll make socks with this one because I'm not wild about this color. I was more enamored with it when I saw the picture online versus when it arrived at my doorstep. But this one, I love this one. It is called Crystal Storm, and this wasn't the one I was going to buy. I was going to buy the other color I have downstairs. Um, this one is, sorry, the light's dim in here. It's a, um, it's like violet, brown, taupe, baby blue. It's great. It has lots of colors. Heavily variegated within a shade band, you know? So, um, I think it'll make a beautiful shawl, nice and soft. And then I also bought, oh, oh, because it looked interesting, like Tigger does. I also got a skein of Lorna's Laces, who also changed her labels, their labels. Um, Soulmate, new to me. This is a 55% superwash merino, 15% nylon, 30% Outlast. The Outlast, I wanted to try that, um, is, I think it helps control temperature variation, like it keeps your foot cool when it's hot and warm when it's cool. Um, yeah, it's machine washable, and then this is like a violet, baby blue slate color. Very similar to this one. Oh, and the color number is 210 Calumet. I don't know. Calumet. So, um, that, that will, these will be a pair of socks, but I do have a lot of socks hibernating on the needles, so I'd like to clear up a few of those before I cast out a new pair. Huh, Roland? Huh? Yeah. Pretty yarn. Pretty yarn. Which one do you like best? The hands. The hands seem to always win. <laughs> so, that's what's new with us. Um, I didn't show you the Christmas ornaments because I haven't touched them. I, I don't know if I'm put off a fair aisle or what, but I want simple things right now. So, um... Yeah, and that's it from last time. Hope all is well with you, and we will catch you back here sometime soon. Take care. Bye. Say my Roland. Okay. Yeah, he said bye. He just... <laughs> Good boy.